I had written, I think, in the, in the first day, maybe even some of the preparation, that if people had questions, to write in. And if I could answer them, I would. Uh, some might be long, and maybe I would have to take more time, and they would have to be answered after our event. But there's a question that came in from a student of mine in Boston by the name of Chris Reed, very talented musician. And he wrote this, he asked me this question. With music being a living thing that is as alive as any of us, what are your thoughts on the differences between repetition and consistency? A lot of musicians believe that their excerpt should be exactly the same and perfect every time in order to win a job. How can a musician keep his, her, music as alive as they would want to, while still keeping completely consistent technical presentation? Should we strive to play our excerpts and solos the same every time? Or should we let them breathe the way we would anything else that is living? If so, how do we reconcile the two? Now, what a fantastic question. I, I have to take the time right now to do the best I can to answer this in this video form and then I'll probably have to write a lot more on it. Because it really hits it on the head. The difficulty that people trying to get a job professionally in usually the classical music world have to, have to deal with, especially the orchestra scene. Um, how can we play something completely consistent every single time? It sounds like there's no leeway. But there is. There's always leeway. Remember that there's always a spectrum of possibilities. There's always room. You just have to know how to create the room to try to be con completely consistent like this replicating machine I was talking about. There's variations in that. As long as the basic pitch and the basic timbre you're going for and the basic rhythmic stability is there, there's leeway. There is leeway. One of the beautiful things that Carol has said is music is the wrapping paper for the essence life that's inside of it. And that relates to what I've said about the body, rhythm, pitch, and timbre being the body of music, but the music's the wrapping paper for the essence that's inside. And she also, in her great way, <laughs> said this about Chris's question, because I was we were talking about it, because it's it brings everything right to the head of what I'm about, what Carol's about, what the frequency band's about, what this frequency bone summer music connection is about. This really music as a living thing. And so I think many times in the frequency band, people have wondered, well, how can I apply, you know, all these thoughts and concepts and different kinds of techniques into the professional scene? Well, if you don't try, you won't know. And I'll tell you, Chris's question is really one of someone who really wants to be a different kind of professional. And there is room for a different kind of professional. There is. If no one tries, then give it to the machines. So Carol said, music will never try to annihilate technique. But technique as an end in itself, will always try to crowd music out. Now 
think about that. How can we integrate the two? Well, if we're talking about music being a living thing, and techniques are part of music, then we have to think about technique as a living thing. That's why a lot of the exercises that I've even given is to try to integrate all of them. So you see, yes, you can pick it apart. Yes, you can look at the orange and say, this is the peel, right? And here's the pulp and the skin. There's the seeds. And then whew, there's the juice. But it's all an orange. So wonderfully, naturally, hermetically sealed. Yet when you open it, it's fresh and vibrant. Well, who's going to squeeze the orange of music the right way so the juice actually comes out? Because if it's just technique, it'll squeeze the music out if the technique isn't thought of as a living thing. Look at a human being. Look at a plant. Look at a flower. You know, you can see a lot of terrific artificial flowers, but when you have a real flower next to it, it's pretty clear that it's different. There's a fragrance. It has a feeling. It has a sense about it. What kind of technique made a human being? Look at the phenomenal technique. Look at all the, the machine and extraordinary technology of the human brain, of the human heart, of a human being. But that's just the body or wrapping paper for the essence inside. And so when you approach technique with some dance, with some art, you're breathing. There's a rhythm, a live rhythm to it. Pitch is a living thing. <laughs> rhythm is a living thing. Try your heartbeat. Now that's consistent. Your heartbeat's consistent. But is it exactly the same? No. Then you would for sure die. Because your heart is sensitive to the fact that you're living and breathing and doing all sorts of different kinds of activity, whether it's thinking or physical or emotional, and it adjusts according to the frequency that you're processing. And your music can do that too. And why shouldn't it? What a fantastic, refreshing change it must be if someone could hear a Tannhäuser that, yes, you're not even thinking about the rhythm, pitch, and timbre in a, in a judgmental way because you're taken for a ride on the eagle's wings. All of these things, the link is think of them as a living thing. And you know what? Did you ever think that it takes a special kind of control to let go? You ever tense your body and then release it? You need to do that to your mind. You can tense it and release it. And then something else can happen when you let go. Something else can come in. But if we're always trying to do this, we could miss something. Now, if you fold this in to your practice of your rhythm, pitch, and timbre, your etudes, your solos, your excerpts, make them alive. Make them alive by knowing that every single component, whether it's tone evenness, there's a spectrum, there's a flexibility. Look at a beautiful branch. Okay? It's sturdy, it's strong, if it's a good thick one. But it has movement and flexibility. So one of the first things to get you in to music as a living thing is realizing the M stands for movement. Thank you, Chris, for your question. I hope this helps people open up the whole territory. Thank you, Carol.